All right, hello everyone, and peace of Christ to all of you. I hope my voice is coming good and clear. First of all, I see people keep hosting my Skype wrongly. I don't have the Beat TV one. It's the Beat TV. There's no space. There's no words. There's no number. So there is somebody is making names like my names. So please be smart. The Beat TV. There's no space. As simple as that. And again, I mean, I don't know why people they say things. I didn't. I never say it. I'm not sure why. Now, our topic today is about loving Muslims and how I understand loving Muslims and what is the purpose of love anyway. You see, uh, always uh, if somebody he like to do business, business need conditions and the conditions uh, need things to happen. As an example, you know, not long time ago, um, video uh, VCR was a very popular video I mean business but now nobody would buy it if it even for free I mean why anyone would use it today we have the internet and today we watch movie online your TV run online so the business need requirement and Muhammad is no different so the requirement of the business of Muhammad is hate because he is just doing a business and the business is based on a strategy that if we Christians and Muslim we hate each other Muhammad is a prophet for sure how is that because then he will guaranteed that the Muslims will not talk to us with love and the Christians will not talk to the Muslims with love so they will stay enemy forever and Muhammad will stay a prophet forever so when you hate the Muslims you are giving Muhammad a hand you are going giving him a success success if you go and read the Quran you will see that all the Quran is based in one thing that the Christians are bad the Jews are bad and you Muslims are victims of the Christians and the Jews but how that can be so Muhammad he wanted that idea and that belief to grow so no Muslims will ever think about being a Christian. As actually, when I was a, a young in a in a in a in like a high school, uh, a Muslim kid he he came to me. He says, "Do you know what the teacher said to us today about the Christians?" I said, "What?" He said, "You promised me you will not do anything. You will not go angry. Do something to me." I said, "Is it something bad?" He said, "I don't know, but you promise. You know, do you promise?" I said I promise he said you promise in the gospel you will not do anything I said I promise so he said to me that his teacher told him that the Christians when they get married in the church the wife of the Christian man she have to spend at least one night with the priest before she go home and the one is teaching the Muslim is a sheikh now why the sheikh is teaching such a lie disgusting lie the purpose is very simple he wanted the Muslims to believe that those Christians are disgusting people we have nothing to do with them we cannot be friend for them we cannot be associating with them and their belief is disgusting by doing that he will guarantee that there's no Muslim will think ever to see okay what the Christians believe who is Jesus for them do in he just gave them a, a, a clear image that they are pure evil disgusting people and the point is the same as Muhammad did and we will prove it to you today so today I'm not going to ask you to love them because Jesus says love them yes Jesus said love them and this is very clear Jesus said that he came for the sick not for the healthy Jesus says love your enemy pray for them pray for those who curse you right so this is no question about it Jesus he ordered us to love everybody including our enemies even Jesus said that time will come people will think by killing you they are doing favor to God and here we understand the secret that somebody will make somebody believe that by killing someone like me or you he is doing favor to God so even the one who kill you is a victim of a lie but the question is who is that one who will make you or make him kill each other that is the devil you know what I mean that is the devil the devil have a business and the business is 
if those Christians and Muslims love each other, so where is my business? My business is gone. Actually, I want to show you some verses from the Quran. And here we see the Quran and the irony of the Quran. Uh, you know, if we if we go uh, and, and review the Quran, we will find tons of verses uh, speaking about the Christians, speaking about the Jews, and all those verses saying something very crazy. I will start from the first one, which actually I agree with it. Chapter 5, verse number 91. Satan only desire to participate in enmity and hatred between you. This verse is a very good verse. Who is the one who like to spread the hatred between us? Muhammad said, Satan. I totally agree with Muhammad in this verse. But look, the same chapter, if we go to verse number 14, it says that the one who will spread hatred and enmity between the Christians is Allah. So how Muhammad, he say that Satan, he like to spread hatred between you. And in the same time, he says, from those who call themselves Christians, we stirred up among them enmity and hatred. Till the day of resurrection. Do you see it? That will make Allah Satan himself. So in one verse, Muhammad saying that Satan want to spread hate against you, each other. And in the same chapter, verse number 14, chapter number 5, Muhammad saying that Allah will spread hatred between the Christians. Now, what is the win of Allah to spread hatred? I will give you an example. What is the win? There's a guy in the chat. He just posted this. He's a Muslim. I just took a snapshot to show it to you. Free Coca 2 saying, please don't love us. Okay. We blessed Muslims do not need your infidel love at all. Here you see the hatred is boiling. He is upset because we are saying we should love Muslims. This is not a good news for him. The devil is angry. He is coming here to see somebody speaking against Muslims, not against Islam. Because if we speak against Muslims, that will ignite the fire and will make business good for the devil. So he is unhappy. Very unhappy. And my friend, just to prove you that you are wrong, you need the love of the Christians because all your Islamic countries, all of them, they depend on the Christians. All Islamic countries, including Saudi Arabia, they are taking assistance from the West. Even Saudi Arabia. The one who protect your Kaaba is the Christians, not the Muslims. When you Muslim need the protection for the Kaaba, you, you call America. You don't call Pakistan. And Pakistan itself asking America for help. Billions of dollars is given for free every year for Egypt, Pakistan, Saudi Arabia, you name it. Somalia. So when you say don't love us, you are freeing yourself. Then why you are here? So you need our love. And, you know, for us, we are not saying that we are loving you because uh, we are like uh, making a charity. We love you because this is what a Christian should do. Christians should love everybody, should not hate. So we love you because simply God, he loved all of us and we are children of God. For God, he loved the world. He sent his only begotten son. So we have to love you. You like it. You don't like it. This is not your choice. This is our choice. Maybe you don't like to love us. It's your business. But here, anyone who is smart, he will agree that love is the benefit of all mankind and enmity is not for the benefit of anyone. If you ask yourself now, when Allah, he strengthens the Christians with hatred and enmity, what is the accomplish, like what Allah accomplished by doing that? What is the success Allah, he did? 
I mean, this is a very clear evil statement from the founder of Islam, whoever he is. His name is Muhammad, his name is Allah, his name is the devil. It doesn't matter what his name. What is the purpose of his spreading hate and enmity between the Christians? All right. What what uh, what is the purpose? What is the what is the success of Allah? I mean, what Allah accomplish? A Muslim, he said, the first university is built by a Muslim. That will be very funny, my friend, because this is their agenda and this is what they say. If the first university built by Muslims, so why they are the last? And just to let you know. All those who they are called scientists in the early stages of Islam, they are not Muslims. There's tons of videos attacking one by one. The Muslim themselves, they say, Al-Razi is not a Muslim, Ibn Sina is not a Muslim, Al-Khawarizmi is not a Muslim. Ibn, even Ibn Khaldun is not a Muslim. So all the famous names of Islam today, they are saying they are Muslims, but the fact they are not, they've been considered atheists or Kuffar or Christians. And... Ten years from now, they will say that uh, Steve Job, he was a Muslim too. The same as Muhammad, he said, Zul Qurnayn, which is Alexander the Great, he was a Muslim. So, you know, I mean, this is, uh, and what this have to do, let us say, let us say for sake of argument, the first university was built by Muslims, and what was that university teaching? teaching? To hate Christians? What, what, what this university was teaching? Chapter 5, verse 41. Or that the sun set in murky water, as the Quran say. Or that Allah, he threat the Christians if they don't believe in Muhammad. He will make, he will erase their faces. Is that really what, uh, what the university is? So when they say university, we laugh. Here we, we notice that Muhammad, always he have two strategic method to conquer, divide and conquer and fear. So here Muhammad, he is not able to conquer by the sword, yet he don't have enough fighters. So he said, all people of the book, which means the Christian and the Jews, believe what is sent by me to you confirming what you possess and here this is an answer for the muslim who say that the bible is corrupt as you see the verse here confirm that muhammad in his time he was confirming what they possess in their hand all right before we transform some of you by the way it doesn't say some of you before we transform faces turning them into their backs and erase them. I mean, the translation is very funny. So Muhammad here, he tried to use superstition to make the Christians believe, fear, fear and superstition. Somebody says, how I can love someone who uh, killed my mother? My friend, I am, you know, when we talk about loving Muslims, I'm not talking about living, loving al-Baghdadi. You know what I mean? If al-Baghdadi, he come to town, al-Baghdadi, he will get what he deserve. So don't take us wrong. You see, we love Muslims. I mean, people who they are like us want to live. They don't want to kill. They want to, you know, they want to just, they are Muslim by birth. Why you want to hate them? I mean, but if you are born between them, you will be like them. You know what I mean? So they are born in a certain family, certain culture, and people, they carry what usually what they have from what is surrounding. So we are here trying to clear the misunderstanding between us and them. So the Muslim will not hate us and we will not hate them. But I'm not saying to you, if a terrorist, he come to town, you give him a hug. This is not what I'm saying. All right. That is not what we are talking about. A terrorist will deal with him in the way he deserves. We are not cowards. Loving people does not mean you. Actually, people who love others, they are brave. The cowards is the one who don't dare to practice love and even forgiveness. So being loving is an act of, you know, bravery. Hatred is an act of coward. 
As you see here, Allah, he tried to scare the Christians to join Islam, but he could not. Then he decided to do something else. He said, okay, you know what? If you don't believe in me, I'm going to curse you and I'm going to make you hate each other. And that proved to us again that Allah is the devil or whoever the founder of this cult, Aka Muhammad, he himself is the devil because he is going to spread hatred. You see, if we, if we compare this to what Jesus said, what Jesus said, look, look, look what Muhammad saying and look what Jesus said. He said that he did not come to the healthy, the doctor, he come to the sick. Correct? Do you understand me? When they asked Jesus, why you are talking to those people? Those people are bad people. He said, well, you know what? Uh, it's not for the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. So if you think that Islam is bringing sickness to the heart of many, then you should be the doctor, not a disease. And how you fight the sickness? By the opposite. Islam spread hatred, you fight hatred by love. So a Muslim, you see, for me, nobody, nobody can get insulted, try to ignite me, make me angry. Nobody, like, you can, you can imagine how, how many videos a day the Muslim they make against me. They cut my videos, they put them together, trying to make Christian Prince look like an ugly person, blah, 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 you know. And I laugh, I feel sorry for them. Sooner or later, they will be sorry. Especially when they see that Muslims who used to hate Christian Prince, they love him today and they accept Christ. But we did not make those Muslims accept Christ by hating them. No, because if we do that, then... I did not invite someone is good to Christianity then. The one who joined a belief because of his hate, he joined a hate belief. And that he is just another hater. We don't want that. All right? So don't do what they do and don't do evil. So while Allah was saying he will spread hatred and enmity between the Christian, Jesus was saying, I came for the sick not for the healthy which means if you are a person who have hatred Jesus is coming to you to heal you are you getting the point if your heart is full of love well Jesus he will not really you do not need I mean you he, he already saved by Jesus because already God is love so the ambulance will come to the one who is a bleeding, who is in risk. Not the one who is standing tall and he is healthy. So they make you angry. You see somebody doing be shot, you know, beheading, and and that actually a very dangerous thing uh, to to make you believe that okay we should hate the Muslim now because look what they are doing. Look what this cult is doing. This is exactly what the devil he want. And let me explain to you more. <clears throat> there is tons of places in the Quran and in the Hadith. All the point of Muhammad is establish enmity until judgment day so he can be prophet until judgment day, which means until judgment day somebody believe that Muhammad is a prophet. How I can do that? If you read this hadith in front of you, which many Muslims, they try not to read in front of the media, that time will come and if a Jew he hide behind a rock or a stone or even a tree, the stone will say, there is a Jew or Muslim. There is a Jew behind me, come and kill him. This is what it's called fascism, Nazi, like Hitler. They hate the Jews. So Muhammad established a lot of hatred to the Jews. Now a Muslim, how he can get away from this? Muhammad now he forced him to fight the Jews forever. And for sure the Christians too. Don't think that the Christians are better, we will show you. So 
by making such a statement that this is even in the judgment day and not only that this is the wish of Allah the wish of Allah is to do genocide and to cleanse the earth from every Christian every Jew now you as a Christian when you hear this that will make you angry and make you maybe say I want to hate the Muslim no you should not you should fight the teaching of this filthy Muhammad explaining to the Muslims that this is wrong we don't want to kill you we don't want to hate each other we can live in peace and let us let us both of us if you're really a person who believe peace is from God I mean the Muslim they say Shalom to you Salamu Alaikum okay how you say Salamu Alaikum but you don't say you don't believe in peace even that one Muhammad because he's evil he twisted so he said don't say peace to the Christians and the Jews if you and if you see them in the uh, road force them to walk in the sewage don't say peace to the Christian and the Jews so when a Muslim he says to you peace either he is like he don't know Islam really he is not a practicing when he think he's a Muslim or he do not know the madness of his prophet or maybe practicing taqiyya not only you have no uh, right to say peace to a Christian or a Jew you have to walk him to force him to walk in the sewage now isn't it this is going to make me angry absolutely but why I want to hate the one who is doing that but I don't go and fight the root of the problem you see if we defeat this teaching this teaching is gone the Muslim will not be a person to be uh, afraid from that he is uh, going to attack you and you know because simply the Muslim is doing that because of the filthy Muhammad not because he is a filthy he himself he think by doing this he is doing what God said you see when you see those from Al-Qaeda and ISIS he want to uh, explode himself he think he is doing favor to God he think he's a hero not only hero he's like he's a, he's a murderer he is like wow God love him so we need to fight the idea <clears throat> before we fight the believers because the believers are victims and that will make us two victims he want to kill me I will be dead he will go to hell because he killed me so the best way to fight the hate of Muhammad is to love the Muslims you see Muhammad is like a guy who opened a store for selling swords in the borders of two countries and those countries they are not fighting each other so nobody is buying his swords so the only way for the sword business to do great is to start a war and this is exactly the strategy of Muhammad so if you fail into the strategy of Muhammad and you became a person who hate the Muslims that's mean Muhammad the devil was successful because we fail into his trap and now we you know you hate the Muslim the Muslim hate you the whole world go in chaos and the devil is having party bloodshed is everywhere We don't want that regardless who is stronger who is weaker we know all of us that today Muslim countries are very weak if you want to go in war with somebody they will be demolished but we don't want them to be demolished why that is not uh, the teaching of Christ we want the Muslims to be healthy to be wealthy to be a uh, 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 prosper uh, uh, to be to live a great in peace and to stop killing each other too I mean if you go on open TV station you will find how many Muslims killed every day by the hand of Muslims in the name of Allah even Al-Qaeda and ISIS they are killing each other imagine so Muhammad teaching is very uh, 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 much based and oh, let us say the fuel of it is hatred the fuel of the teaching of Christ is love so we have two engine one run by hate 
and one run by love. Which one will win? Which one will win? The answer is very simple. For me as a Christian, for sure, I would say uh, love will win. However, let us say we have uh, we have two containers. Let us say we have a train. This is a train. And there's a train next to it. Let us make it in different color. One train has half of it love and the other train have half of it as a fuel hatred. The winner will be always is Muhammad if we can make all those trains full of hatred, both of them. The train of the Christians and the train of the Muslims, the train of the atheists and the train of the Muslims, the train of the Jews, the Hindus, etc. So if we can make the trains full of hatred, the winner always is Muhammad. Because hatred in, hatred out, guaranteed. War, bloodshed, people killing each other, people hating each other, the world is in chaos. So how Muhammad will lose then? Very simple. The more hate we erase from the fuel of each train, the weaker the devil will be. He's empty. There's no fuel. How his hate will run. So the devil, he need people who believe in hate. And they practice hate. And when you refuse hate, if you are a Muslim or a Christian or a Hindu or a Jew, then the devil is the loser. Now, ask yourself if you are a Muslim, does, does what I'm saying make sense? Ask yourself, you are a human being. I mean, forget about Muhammad, forget about the Christian, the Jews, you as a human being. Ask yourself, is it true that hatred is really will make the devil happy? I mean, obviously, yes. It's clear. So, if you increase your hate to the Muslims, Christ is not winning, and you is not winning, and Muslims are not winning. The devil is winning. There's only one winner when the hate increase. It is the devil, and that I believe his name is Muhammad. Muhammad always he wanted the Muslims to believe that the Christians are ugly people who hate them. And we explain the reason because he don't want us Christians and Muslims to be friends. And actually, he made it clear in, in the Quran, chapter 5, verse number 51. He said, Take not Christians and Jews as a friends. And if you take them as a friend, you are one of them, which means you are a person who is full of love. And if you are full of love, you don't belong to me. I'm a person who is full of hate. This is the Quran, chapter 5, verse number 51. So Muhammad's hatred was to prevent any friendship between us. If we are not going to be a friend to the Muslims and the Muslims will reject to be a friend to us, Muhammad, the devil, is 100% successful. Because that means we, if we cannot be friends, that means we have to be an enemy only. You know what I mean? If we cannot be friends, we are enemies. I don't mind to have a Muslim as a friend. Why not? I would love to. I don't hate them. I will never hate them. 
And actually, if a Muslim he need my help, I will be happy to help him. You know, in my last trip to Germany, uh, once I was in the bus station in the airport, and there was a Muslim woman, she is old. Uh, it was raining, and there's like a small space for people to wait for the bus, and there's no place for her. I gave her my place, and I know she's a Muslim. I can tell easy from the from the way she dressed, but for me, I see her as my mother, not as a Muslim woman. She was very thankful, and she was appreciating. And then even later, when she went in the bus, she said thank you again and again, uh, 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 one more time in the bus. This time, a woman, a Muslim woman, she jumped in the bus. She does no space. I gave her my chair. I can stand up. No, I can stand up for three hours, four hours. It doesn't hurt me. And she's a Muslim. So we as a Christians, we are the ambassador of Christ. And Islam always will try to make you look bad. This is why you see the Muslim, they are making some, some evil ones of them, not all of them. Making, they edit videos of people and they make them, you know, they fabricate stories to make them look ugly. Like, you know, they, they go and harass this poor guy, uh, 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 the apostate prophet, to put stress on him because he's exposing Islam. So we don't want to do what some evil people do. We are better than that. We are Christians, remember that. And we say to Muhammad, as an answer for chapter 5, verse 51, I have no problem to take a Muslim as a friend and not only that, to protect him. Because this verse, by the way, is not only about taking them as a friend, it's about taking them, taking Christians as protectors. I will be happy to protect a Muslim if he is a victim of a crime. And it is your duty, actually, as a Christian, if you see a Muslim, he is somebody treating him unjust. You know, think about it this way. Somebody is unjust to a human. He is unjust to you. Because what kind of a Christian I am if I accept unjust? I'm not, I'm not a follower of Muhammad. Muhammad, he accepts unjust. You see, Muhammad in the Hadith, and the Muslim, they speak, like uh, the Quran says, as an example, what it's mean that every soul will pay for its sin. Every soul will pay for it is its own sin. And this is exist actually in many verses in the Quran. But Muhammad, he did not practice this and he don't believe in this. Muhammad, he said that in the judgment day, the Muslims will come and they have a sin in, in, in the size of a mountain. And he will place the sin of the Muslims in the top of the Christians. How that can be? Justice. This is the hatred of Muhammad. The Messenger of Allah said, On the day of resurrection, Allah will deliver to every Muslim a Jew or a Christian and say, This is your ransom of a hellfire. Look at this. I mean, do you see how sick this man Muhammad is? So, a person who want to deceive you, he said to you, Well, Islam says, or like, especially when they speak about Jesus, why Jesus, he paid for your sin. It doesn't make sense, man. The Quran make more sense. Okay, what, what the Quran teach? That everyone should pay for his own sin. Oh, okay. So everyone, are you sure? Yes, everyone should pay for his own sin. And this is exist in the Quran as an example, chapter 53, verse number 38. He can call me later. We have to finish the topic first. So as you see the Quran saying it clearly that no soul shall be a lord of the other, which means everyone pray for his sin. Okay? So why Allah is saying that Allah will place 
the sin of the Muslims on the Christians and the Christians will be used as a chicken ransom for the Muslims from hellfire that is the teaching of hate so how I can respond to the filthy teaching of Muhammad about us being ransomed like a chicken I say to him my friend and I'm talking not to Muhammad to the Muslims my friend don't believe in Muhammad Muhammad is an evil man what do you think of, of Jesus said that in the judgment day you go and do a sin as much as you want but in the judgment day Allah will bring a Muslim and he will be your ransom from sin Christians you will say this is evil right isn't it evil just let us switch position between me and a Muslim person ask yourself the question right <clears throat> Somebody said that somebody he made me upset because God he gave his blessing to all mankind. This is true, my friend. You see, the blessing here is about the opportunity of life. This is why the sun, the Bible says, the, the sun rays upon the bad and the good. So everybody will get the benefit of the sun. But then time will come and everybody will pay the price of his crimes. All right. But here you see how much Muhammad, he much hate he have in his hatred in his heart. I mean, why this guy, he did not say, in the judgment day, Allah will forgive you. What is the point of saying, Allah will tell you, hey, Muslim, take, this is a Christian prince. He's a ransom for your sin. Oh, this is John. Oh, this is Julie. Oh, this is Maria. Oh, this is etc. Those are your ransom. What, what is that? This is a pure hatred. For us as a Christian, we say, my friend, the Messiah, he saved you and he will not let someone else pay for your sin because this is unjust and this is evil. This is evil. I mean, just because I'm a Christian and somebody always commits sin, you put his sin on me? What is just? That is nothing but a pure evil. Your, your God, if you are a Muslim and you are listening, by his teaching is saying to us that not only he is unjust, this person is so much depressed. You see, because the hatred is is a uh, is is coming from depression mostly regardless if the depression is real or not because somebody some people they might be depressed because of the idea of conspiracy as an example so he feel always he's a victim it doesn't matter what happened he's driving he have a flight tire he he think he's a victim his car broke he's a victim uh, something happened during the day he's a victim you know so depression is something you can build up by your own but this god for sure he is suffering from a lot of depression and the depression is coming all of it from the christian and the jews did you ask yourself why allah did not say a hindu why why he did not mention the hindu because allah is not knowing the hindus he do not know the hindus he never heard of them why only the christians and the jews there is atheist, there is communist, there is Buddhas, there is Hindus. Actually, India have hundreds of religions and gods. Why only Christians and, religion and Jews? And the funny would make it more funny. The Christian and the Jews, according to Islam, according to Muslims, that we believe in the same God. So how come that the one who believe in you, Allah, let us say he is wrong, but still he believe in you at the end of the day, according to Islam. Why that person you hate him very much and the one who don't believe in you at all you don't care You know what I mean So Muhammad obviously he have a propaganda of hatred and if we allow the hatred propaganda grow in our heart that's mean the seeds of Muhammad is growing and Muhammad was very successful business hatred man. 
and the Quran always non-stop and the hadith showing us how much Muhammad he spread hatred and he practiced it you see uh, one of the Muslim he says that the Christian Prince he said that he uh, uh, agree with Inquisition you know I did not say I agree with the Inquisition I said that the Inquisition you know we have to understand history and when the Spanish they've been tortured raped their land been taken for 800 years by occupation it's called Islamic occupation and then somebody joined the enemy army and helped them I find it very normal for in war that the one who is victorious to punish the one who betrayed him and actually until now people they practice this if any soldier in the army in US army in any army he betray his nation most of the countries they practice uh, even execution today this is not tomorrow or you know so you join the army who occupy your country and you help them and you fight with them and you join their government you are the same as Hitler you know somebody he joined Hitler you have no right in this land so you know people they try to misquote you and try to misinform people about what you believe the fact as you see Muhammad is the one who believe in the Inquisition I believe that people have the right of, of, of belief and the freedom of belief but you know if you are a person who joined the enemy during the war betraying your people this is a this, this different business you are a traitor as simple as that here Muhammad he have no reason those are Jews who they are born there those are Christians who they are born there they are not coming to Mecca and they are occupying the Medina they are from that land why you want to kick them and why you want to kill them why you want to do and he did he did genocide there's zero Christians in the Arabian Peninsula there's zero Jews in the Arabian Peninsula so the Muslims the hypocrisy of those who claim to be Muslims that they, they speak about the Inquisition of the Spanish but okay if you believe that's wrong you know why you don't believe that this is wrong too hypocrisy the Spanish they are not the one who come to your land it's you who came to the land so if they go after the criminal who came to their land and raped their women and steal their money and rip their, their wealth and their land from them, you cry and you say, this is inquisition, this is filthy, this is bad. Well, you know, they are taking back their land. Whatever you want to call it. I don't know. Maybe they committed crimes. Maybe they committed ugly stuff. But it's you who came to their land and you are the one who committed more ugly stuff. So look what happened. If you fight the devil Muhammad, that will make you an evil person. But Muhammad coming to your land, taking your land, and expelling the Christians and the Jews from their lands and from their houses, and taking their money and their property and their women and their children as slaves, it's okay. It's not okay to be for you to be evil like Muhammad. It's okay for Muhammad to be evil. Only Muhammad have a license to be evil. So we as a Christian, we have a duty to explain this to the Muslims because Muhammad, as I said, always he wanna implemented the idea that Christians and Jews, they hate the Muslims. We don't hate the Muslims. We will not, we, why wanna hate you? I mean, did you ask yourself what the problem? What is the problem? The problem is Islam, it's not Christianity. There's nowhere Christ, he said, go and hate Muslims. There's nowhere Christ, he said, fight them, kill them. It is all over your Quran. If we go right now in the Quran, chapter 3, verse 112, Allah saying that Allah, he cursed the Christians and the Jews. And he forced in humiliation on them. We are cursed. And we have to be humiliated. This is why if you go to chapter 9, verse number 29, you will see Muhammad saying that the, 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 the mushrikeen, the one who don't believe in Allah alone and his prophet Muhammad, they are nudges, they are filthy, dirty. This is fascist, this is Nazi. Imagine I have a sign that says, if you are a Hindu, you are uh, etc. Or if you are a Muslim. That's disgusting. 
So a person who grow up in such atmosphere, he been taught that non-Muslims are filthy, dirty. Therefore are not allowed. There's no go zone. Islam practice no go zone. I, I saw once somebody speaking about uh, uh, saying that they lied if Islamophobia, Islam does not practice that. It's in the Quran. I mean, the stupidity is unlimited sometimes. إِنَّمَا الْمُشْرِكُونَ نَجِسٌ فَلَا يَقْرَبُ الْمَسْجِدَ الْحَرَامِ Oh, the, 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 the mushrikeen, the infidels, the kuffar, the Christians, the Jews, the Hindu, the Buddha, all of them. They are najis, they are filth. So they cannot enter the holy ground of the masjid. And, and now you will see that not only that, because Muhammad, he said, I will expel all the Christians from the Arabian Peninsula. So not even a single Christian or a Jew or a Hindu, he can carry a citizenship in the Arabian Peninsula. Actually, the funny we see that Muslims are angry from India for making a law saying that uh, a Muslim immigrant, they will not give him citizenship. Do you give a, uh, do you give a Hindu immigrant citizenship? There's people, they work in Saudi Arabia for 40 years. 40 years. They will never have a citizenship. And not only that, imagine how filthy this cult is to the point you can work in Saudi Arabia, but you cannot die there, which means if you die in Saudi Arabia, they will refuse to bury your body there. Your body have to be shipped to India. Why? Because you are you are filthy, according to the Quran. There is not a single graveyard in Saudi Arabia for non-Muslims. How many millions do go and work there? Have you ever asked yourself how come there is not a, sing not a single grave? The reason is because Muhammad is a fascist. Muhammad is more evil than Hitler himself. So you can work in Saudi Arabia, but you cannot die in Saudi Arabia. This is why I'm saying to you that we should not hate Muslims, because if we hate Muslims, Muhammad, he is successful. He was able to establish hate between us. As you see, this is his plan. His plan is that the Muslim have a duty until judgment day to fight the Christians, and that will make the earth is burning. Imagine if we really, if we go, imagine, imagine, God forbid, there is a real war happening between Christians and Muslims, between Christian countries from one side and Muslim countries from one side. I mean, how many hundreds of millions will die, especially from the Muslims? Because they are the weaker side. Right? No, if you don't expose Islam, you are not helping Muslim. That is a that is a fake agenda, my friend. Any church refuse to expose Islam, they are not. They are first of all, they are giving a chance to the to, to Muslims who they are misleaded, to mislead your children. Secondly, how the Muslim will believe in Jesus if we don't show him that he was misleaded? Those are fake Christians. I call them. I label them. We clear label fake Christians. They are fake. You see, Jesus himself, he exposed liars. Are you better? A Christian have to be truthful. What do you mean don't expose Islam? So a lie? So if a Muslim says to me, do you believe Allah is God? I say yes. <laughs> I say Muhammad is a prophet. I say yes. We do taqiyya as Muhammad, you know, he told Muslims. Read with me here carefully. <clears throat> do not, you know, here it says, that the Christians, they have to be treated in such a way. They have to be defeated. Like, you know, many Muslim uh, uh, cleric in the in YouTube, they say to you, paying jizya is like paying tax. That's all. Look what look what they teach in their mosque behind the doors. Until they pay the jizya, if they do not choose to embrace Islam. Okay, but what is jizya? Paying jizya is a sign of kufr and disgrace. Do you see the title? Paying jizya is not tax. It's a sign of disgrace and kufr, which means you are an infidel. If they choose not to embrace Islam. So what is the solution with the Christians? Read carefully. So they have to be disgraced, humiliated. 
And this is why Muslims, therefore, Muslims are not allowed to honor the Christians and the Jews. Do you see it? They are not allowed. And not only that, they are not allowed to elevate the Christians and the Jews in respect. People of the Dhimma is a Christian and Jews. This is what Dhimma mean. So those who pay jizya, they call the people of the Dhimma. So therefore, the Muslims are not allowed to honor the people of the Dhimma, the Christian and the Jews, or elevate them above the Muslims, for they are miserable, disgraced, and humiliated. My friend, you as a Christian, I encourage you to treat a Muslim nicely. I encourage you, if a Muslim, he needs your help, and he is a person you think he deserves it, you help him. We don't want to do what Muhammad is teaching. Because if we do to Muslims what Muhammad he says to the Muslim to do to us, we became equal to Muhammad. Do you understand? We don't want that to be part of our belief, for this is not far away from Christ's teaching. But yet, if you go to the mosque, they will say to you, Islam is peace, Islam teaching uh, equality. We believe that all of us, we are brothers and sisters. That's that's false. Don't initiate the salam to the Jews and the Christians. And if you meet any of them in the road, force them to the most narrow alley, which means force them to walk in the sewage. This is why the leader, Omar, the faithful, Omar Khattab, may Allah be pleased with him, demand his will, known in the condition to be met by the Christians, those conditions to ensure the continue of humiliation, and, uh, 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 and, and disgrace to the Christians. Do you see it? To ensure the continues. That is the truth in the front of you. I'm not making things up. And the devil Muhammad, to be sure that he is success, successful in his business, so we Christians and Muslims will hate each other, he got tons of verses in the Quran speaking about Christians are our enemies. If we go in the Quran, let us see, let us find some. <clears throat> let us see. Chapter 2, verse number 109. Look at this verse. Pure evil. Many of the people of the book, which means the Christians and the Jews, each time you see people of the book, it's mean Christians and Jews. Remember that. Wish they might restore you as unbeliever after you believe in jealousy of their soul after the truth has come to them. Hmm? This is the Muslim translation. Not my translation and by the way it doesn't say uh, jealousy it says uh, hasad hasad like envy they are evil you see the Christian they don't want you to be to enjoy Islam they are evil people they have their own envy Not only that, Muhammad, in different verse, he said, that the Christian and the Jews, they will never wish good things to the Muslims. Chapter 2, verse 105. Those unbelievers of the people of the book, the Christian, the Jews, and the adulterers wish not that any good should be sent down upon you. Do you see how much this evil Muhammad is trying to implement hate between us? So now if I'm a Muslim reading the Quran, I read this. Okay, the Quran, Allah is God saying to me, the Christian, the Jews, they never wish something good to you. I will believe it. Therefore, the Muslim for me is a victim of the lies of Muhammad. And I asked the Muslims, if the Christians and the Jews and etc., they will never wish good to you. Why they are the only one who give you refugee? Why the only one who give you shelter? Why the only one he pay for your children to go to school for free and for health insurance? How many million Muslims they are right now in Europe coming as refugee? 
why you don't go to Afghanistan why you don't go to Pakistan why you don't go to Saudi Arabia why you don't go to those Islamic countries why you escape to the land of the kuffar if this verse is true and this is what exactly what I'm saying the doing the act opposite from the teaching of Muhammad is a clear proof that Muhammad is a false prophet this man he just said that Christians they never wish something good to the Muslims but the Christian they prove the opposite Muslims they don't seek refuge in Muslim lands they don't trust them many Muslim women they went to Jordan as refugees you go and see what they did to them I'm not going to say it's a, it's a shame go and see what happened to the refugee who went to Saudi Arabia So Muhammad, he want to put in the head of the Muslims that Christians are pure evil and they will never be good to you. So how we can fight the lies of Muhammad is by doing the teaching of Christ, by being good to the Muslims, which is proving Muhammad to be a false prophet. Actually, there's a verse Muhammad, he says, that the Christians and Jews, they will never uh, be... Uh, happy with you unless you follow their belief and look here how how, how, how how stupid this statement is chapter 2 verse 120 <laughs> never will the Jews and the, the Christian uh, the Jews and the Christian will be satisfied never will the Jews be satisfied with thee neither the Christians not till you follow their religion <laughs> hold on hold on Anyone notice how stupid this verse is? A Muslim, he cannot become a Jew. Because a Jew, you cannot convert to be a Jew. Maybe today, because the, you know, Judaism is almost, everybody became a Christian. So some synagogues, falsely, they are agreeing to accept people to be Jews. But this is not part of Judaism belief. A Jew, he have to be from the children of Israel. Even the Quran confirmed that. So how do you, how you will follow the religion? How, how you want to be a Jew? That is a statement of false. Secondly, if I say the Christian and the Jews, they will never be satisfied with you until you follow the religion. Isn't it the case for you, Muhammad? Do you see the stupidity here? Isn't it you, Muhammad, will never be satisfied with us unless we follow the religion too? So how that will make them evil, but you practice the same, that will not make you evil. Do you notice the stupidity and the low IQ of this man? His name is Muhammad. Do you understand me? If they, the Christians and the Jews, will never be, will, we will never satisfy unless you follow the religion and that's supposed to make them bad. Well, you, you believe in the same. <laughs> Madness and a stupidity and low IQ. He's suffering from low intellect. And you know, the Muslims, in order to, to be taught to, to hate us, they start telling them about the crusade. But my friend, the crusade happened after you attack us, not before. It was your prophet who sent three letters to three kings saying, convert to Islam or else. And one of them to the king of the Roman. This is the truth. It's written in your books. So why it's okay for you to attack them, but it's not okay for them to attack you back. The crusade was not a mission of the Christians to fight the Muslims. The crusade was a fight against fighting back. They are fighting back, not the opposite. So do you see how they lie? The crusade, do you know what the crusade happened? You did the crusade first. Your, the crusade was your crusade. The crusade happened as a response to your crusade. But here you see the hypocrisy. They took Spain. It's not a crusade. 
They took Damascus, it's not a crusade. They took Egypt, it's not a crusade. They took the Babylon, it's not a crusade. They took Constantinia, it's not a crusade. You fight back, it's a crusade. <clears throat> Somebody said lost, Christian lost in the crusade. No, the fact the Christian did not lose in the crusade. <clears throat> That's not true. The Christian, they, they, they won in the crusade. If, if not the crusade, actually, all of Europe will be Muslims by now. There's a king who defeated the terrorist, who ISIS, who came to the heart of Europe. If not him, all of Europe right now will be a Muslim continent. So no, the crusade was successful. Maybe they were not successful like uh, to defeat all of Islam, the attack of Islam, but they were successful to keep and to save good part of the Christian countries. So the crusade was not an act of the Christians because of hate against Muslims. It was a respond to the attack of Muhammad. And this is the truth. This is the truth. So for me as a Christian, I advise all the Christians not to fail into the trap of Muhammad, which is hatred. If you hate the Muslims and the Muslims hate us because they follow Muhammad teaching, then there's one person celebrating party. That is the devil, Muhammad. So we as a Christian, we should not hate the Muslims. We should hate the hate of Islam. We should expose Islam. And this is what we are doing. So our enemy really is not a poor Muslim who believe in such a cult. He's a victim. He needs your help. Even those who attack me and make lies about me, etc. I pray for them. Actually, I will make a special prayer in the Christmas for the Muslims. Forgive them, Father. They do not know what they are doing. This is what the Messiah said in the cross. Am I better than the Messiah? No way. So if I claim to be a person following the Messiah, yes, I get angry. Yes, I am a human. Yes, uh, you know, they try to, 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 uh, to make you like them, let us say. But if you fell into their trap, you became one of them. So we should not, we should always resist the hatred. Always. And you know, if you see all those Muslims who called us and they left Islam life on air, do you think they will leave Islam and they will become a Christian if they... If, if they are running away from the hatred of Islam, so why do they want to join Christianity? If Christianity is teaching the same. You know what I mean? Why somebody, he have a hatred cult, will leave that hatred cult to join another hatred cult. They stay in that cult, both of them, they are the same then. So when you show them that we are, as a Christians, we are not as the devil Muhammad. You give them a reason to leave. Very good reason. All right? And actually, this is what make them very angry. This is why we saw this uh, gentleman who posed this uh, uh, for us, saying, we do not need your love. Did you see the post of the Muslim in the, in the beginning of the chat? He said, you infidels, he's calling us names, infidels, which means we are dirty, filthy. We do not need your love. They are, he's angry because we said we will love them. That's exactly what I'm talking about. The devil will be upset if you love the Muslims. He will be happy if now we are, you know, saying, uh, fight them, kill them, you know. Actually, there's a verse in the Quran says, Qatalahum, Qatalahum Allah. Huh? Here we go. 
Have you ever heard of a filthy cult like this before? The Jews, they say, Uzair is a son of Allah. By the way, we could not find the guy, his name is Uzair, which the Jews believe is a son of Allah. And this is one of the stupidity of Muhammad. Muhammad, he hears stories, he put it in the book. And the Christian, they say the Messiah is the son of Allah. By the way, the Christian don't believe that Jesus is son of Allah. We believe he's son of God. But Allah is not our God. They utter this from their own mouths. They speak like former disbelievers. May Allah kill them. I mean, have you ever heard of a stupid cult more than May Allah kill them? Anyone notice how many mistakes there is in this verse? How many mistakes we notice here? In one verse, proving to us that Muhammad is nothing but a fraud. The first mistake is the Jews, according to Muhammad, they believe there is a person, his name is Uzair, and he is a son of God. That's impossible. There's no such a thing. Never exist, nowhere to be found. Number two, the Christian believe that he is son of Allah. Christian don't believe that he is son of Allah. They believe he is son of God. Elohim. Not Allah. And then may Allah kill them. If you are Allah, you are saying may Allah kill them to who? Not only this is a filthy request. What do you mean may? What about doing it? May? This is Allah is talking. That is a proof that the Quran is a fabrication of a man who hate the Christians to death. He is making a prayer saying, may Allah kill them. If Allah is the one who is talking, he will not say, may Allah kill them. Correct? What do you mean, may Allah kill them? You are Allah. <laughs> I mean, this is the most stupid book ever. May Allah kill them. Allah praying to who? When I say, may God curse you, may God, whatever, etc., that's mean I'm asking God. Obviously, I'm not God. And this is exactly what's happening here. May Allah kill them. Not only it's evil, disgusting, what about you saying, may, may Allah guide them? Isn't it better? No, may Allah kill them. See, so just to make it clear, loving Muslim does not mean loving Islam. Loving Muslim does not mean you lie and you say Islam is a good religion. It's not even a religion. It's not even a cult. It's a collection of cults. Loving Muslim is saving them from the cult of Islam and not to treat them evil, even if they, somebody or some of them, they want to do that to you. We will not establish Al Qaeda to go after Muslims. We will establish. We will not establish a Christian ISIS. That is filthy. That's disgusting. I prefer to open a refuge camp for the Muslims to help them, give them food, doctors, show them that Christ teaching he made of us different people. Look. I am an Arab. I'm coming from the same land. What is different between me? I mean, both of them, both of us, we are from the same, we, we eat the same food. We are from the same land. So why an Arab Christian, he don't preach killing people? The, the answer is very simple. I'm a Christian. People, they say you are what you eat. I say you are what you believe. Christ to make me act differently. So love is very powerful and Muhammad he knew and he feared love. So you Christians don't hate the Muslims even if they make you angry, even if they discriminate you. Like I know there's many people here they are from Indonesia and they are minority and they discriminate them. They say this the same they do to us in the Middle East. That should make you a better person and make you fight back, but not against Muslims, against Islam. You see, Muhammad don't fear you fighting against Muslims. Actually, he like you to fight against Muslims because that will increase the hate. He don't want you to fight against Islam.
His fear is that we are going to expose Islam to the Muslims. His fear is not you fighting Muslims. He want you to. He want the Muslims and the Christians to be in war, bloodshed forever. We should not allow that. So I hope that's my explanation is so clear. And to make it simple, Muhammad agenda is by hate I can be a prophet. By love, I am gone. If I, if we can keep hate between the Christian and the Jews and the Hindus and the Buddhas and etc., Muhammad is a prophet. Then his prophecy is a prophecy of the devil. His belief can survive. But if people want to practice love, then Muhammad is rejected, as you see. You see, this verse will disappear from the mind of anyone the second he believed that he should love somebody is a Hindu, correct? Or somebody is a Christian or somebody is a Muslim. So if we or people in this earth, we love each other and we treat, a, okay, I don't believe in what you believe. I'm going to show you you are wrong. You show me that I'm wrong too. But there's no need for violence and no need for hatred. That would be wonderful. Muhammad, you don't like that. The survival of Islam is by creating an enemy, even if this enemy doesn't exist. It's like the big corporate in, in, in USA, they have to make always Russia an enemy. Because if Russia is not an enemy, so how we will convince the government to spend the trillions of dollars? We need a big enemy to explain the big spending. So instead of making this money to build the schools, to pay for the uh, for the student to go to schools, you know, in USA, most of students, they cannot, they cannot afford to go to school. They take mortgage. You believe it? In America, a student, he cannot go to school. He take a loan. And then he spent 15, 20 years to pay for what he spent in school. But we have money to build crazy stuff. Nobody can use even. I mean, stuff we have already can destroy the whole earth. Why we need more? But we need more because we need to create an enemy. And even if this enemy does not exist, for this is the only way for the business to run. And this is exactly Muhammad's strategy. He need to create an enemy. The Jews are your enemy. The Christians are your enemy. The infidels are your enemy. So the Muslims always will feel that they are and that the conspiracy and they are victims. Everybody is against them. So by, by showing the Muslims that we are not their enemy, we are against Islam, yes. You see, even Muhammad, he made it more clear. Look how evil he is. He said clearly, you will not find one Muslim who will be in good relationship with non-Muslims. You will not. Not a single one. Chapter 58, verse number 22. You will not find the people who believe in Allah in the last day befriending those who oppose Allah and the noble messenger, even if they are their fathers and their sons. And this is exactly what Muhammad's strategy is. He wants mankind to be divided for he is the devil. So even if your father is your father, I mean, okay, my father, he don't believe in my belief. Why I cannot be a friend with him? What does that mean? You know, he don't like Muhammad, okay. No, you cannot. You will not find a true Muslim. He will be a friend to his father and his brother from his family, from his blood. Even if they are his father from blood and they are from their tribe. This is why it's very important for us to stand against the evil and not to promote hate. So I say to the Muslims and I say to the Christians, it's for your good and for our good and for the good of all mankind that you live and love people around you. you might, my friend, hate will kill you before it kills somebody else. You see, when I go to Islamic countries, 
I see faces are unhappy because you open TV. I mean, every day in TV, they are talking about the crusade. Those guys, they are told in, the, in their TV stations today in the year 2019, they are talking about the crusade. You believe it? Anything happening in the world, it's the crusade. Because they wanted hatred to stay and to live. This is why this guy, his name is Erdogan. Erdogan want to swallow the Mediterranean. Erdogan won the oil of Cyprus. He won the oil of Libya. He won the oil of, uh, he won the land of a Greek. You know, still he want more. And the second you say something, he speak about the crusade. The second you say to him, why are you are doing, he say crusade. This is, this is the evil of Muhammad, and we should stand against it by loving the Muslims, not by hating them. So I want to say thank you for being here. And again, loving, loving Muslim does not mean love the teaching of Muhammad. This is not what I'm saying. Loving Muslims is to be Christian and to be Christ-like. As simple as that. If you do what Muhammad do, you are no better than Muhammad. If you are a person who want to go and kill Muslims, you are no better than Muhammad. Muhammad, in this case, is a winner. If you are a person who uh, who think that the solution is shooting people and killing people, exactly you are doing what Muhammad did. And that means you are a loser. Refuse to be evil. This is why Jesus said, don't fight evil by evil. That will make us too evil. Not one. So instead of solving a problem, we increase the problem. We have enough evil in this earth. Muhammad created a lot of evil and we have to repair it. And the only way to repair it and to fight it is to show the Muslims that what Muhammad said about us is not true. And you know, uh, they get upset from me and they talk about making sense. You know, like when a Muslim, he come to you because he he, he, he he's brainwashed, he, he, he heard a lot of agenda and propaganda. Uh, uh, so it doesn't make sense that Jesus will die for you. Okay, forget about Jesus will die for me. Does it make sense that God he will give you endless number of women and they have no panties. Does it, does it make sense that God will give you 70 years orgasm? Does it make sense that God, he will make your private part endless? I mean, what kind of religion this religion is? Does it make sense that God will give you 80,000 little boys to serve you? And you are talking about making sense. Does it make sense that you should hate each other? Does that make sense to you? So what, we go now in the street and we start shooting each other? What, what, th this is how a human being should live? What you build all your life can be destroyed in two seconds if you practice the teaching of Muhammad. Look what happened to Syria. What happened to Syria is because of the teaching of Muhammad. Muslims killing Muslims. Every school of thought, they believe they are the true Muslim and the rest should be vanished. They should be killed. The result is Syria, you know, this country is gone. Iraq, Libya, Afghanistan. And nothing can build those countries, by the way, because they are going to build the stones, but they are not rebuilding really build, the brain. The idea of killing each other is still there. So they will rebuild the country now. After 100 years ago, um, from now, it will happen again because the hatred is still there. The first build you have to build is love. If you don't have love, everything will be destroyed sooner or later. The whole earth, this is the whole earth, not only about Christians and Muslims, the whole earth will be destroyed because this earth is missing a lot of love.
So they think about investing money to build a country, but they forgot that this money later will be used to buy weapon because the people who live in that country, they still believe in hatred. You need to kill the hatred first, not the people. Don't kill the people. The people are victims. You need to kill the hatred idea from their heart. You need to take it away. And then you will have a successful nation, a nation who will prosper and live and be happy. I mean, what the difference between Muslim countries and Europe? They are in the borders. What is the? Did you ask yourself what is different? Actually, they have more money than Europe, if you think about it. They have oil, they have gas, they have, I mean, so why they are not enjoying their life? What's wrong? And the countries who they have good wealth are the one protected by the West. The second the West take their finger away, those countries will be demolished. Like Saudi Arabia, like Emirat, like Qatar, like Bahrain. This is why you will see that Muslims, they invite non-Muslims to protect them. But isn't the Quran says in chapter 5, verse 51, take not Christians and Jews as a friends? And if you take them as a friend, you are one of them. So why are you asking the Christians to protect you? Because they cannot trust anyone except the Christians. Muslims, they don't trust Muslims. Do you know that number one employees in Saudi Arabia is either Christians or Hindus? Did you ask yourself why? Why they are not getting a lot of Muslims from Pakistan, Bangladesh? They bring a very limited number. They don't trust Muslims. A Muslim, he come to Saudi Arabia. Second day, he think that this is his land because he's a Muslim and he start telling the king what he to do, what to do. And he will start problems. So they bring Christians and Hindus. They need them, you know, Guys, is my is my voice bad? You don't hear me? Is my sound bad? Is it weak? Somebody saying my voice is not good. I don't know. Let me know, please, if my voice is not coming good. Maybe the volume is not good. I'm going to increase a little bit. I'm not sure if that will fix it. Okay, I increased the volume a little bit. I hope I hope that will fix the issue for some. <clears throat> All right. So my friend, love the Muslims, don't hate them. Hate the hate, hate the devil, hate violence, hate hate to be evil. And this is how you can live healthy. This is how you can be a healthy human being. Even if you are not a Christian. If you are, let's just say you are not a Christian, you don't believe in Christianity, you don't believe in Jesus, I advise you, never hate. Hate will kill you first. Hate will destroy you first. I come here to teach almost every day, based on love, not on hate. They throw rocks at me. I understand, it's okay. They did that to Jesus one day. I'm not better. I'm no one. If, if that happened to Jesus, what do you think would happen to someone like me? So the best way to fight the evil of Muhammad is to be loving to Muslims. And loving to Muslims is not about giving hugs like those silly stuff, you know, like give me a hug, give me a hug. This is a stupid thing. This is not what loving Muslims is. Loving Muslims is to show them how filthy Muhammad is so they can be saved. Show them the errors of the Quran, the stupidity of Allah, so they will see that all of Islam is nothing but a fabrication so they can be saved. And then they will not hate you. They will not believe in the hate book of Muhammad. This is the best way. Not like some fake Christian, they say, oh, they come to a Muslim, they say, yeah, we believe in the same God. No, we don't believe in the same God. Our God is love, their God is not. Our God is a spirit, their God is not. Our God have a son, their God is not. We are, even their heaven is not the same as our heaven. What do you mean we have the same God? We don't. 
So saving the Muslims and loving the Muslims is not by being hypocrite and saying to them you are right and you are fine and don't worry, be happy. That is a deception. Actually, if you love somebody, you save him. You don't tell him, okay, imagine like somebody is walking in a bridge and the bridge have a hole. And he asks you, is, is my bridge is okay? You say to him, yeah, yeah, keep going, keep going, keep going. And then he is he's in the middle of the, of the bridge. Then he fell down in the hole. Why? Because you were afraid to say to him that your bridge have a hole and you will go to hell. That means you are the one who caused the person to go to hell. You are part of this deception. You participate in it. You are like Muhammad. So I want to say thank you for all for being here. And I hope my video is so clear for everybody. Feel free to translate, to add subtitle, to write in your in your channel, share it with your friends. And let us together, you know, we have the spirit of the Christmas is coming. And the spirit of Christmas is beautiful. And Islam hate this spirit. Islam, Muhammad, the devil, Muhammad, he hated. Because the spirit of the Christmas is about being happy. Islam is anti-happiness. And you cannot be a Muslim and you are happy. No way. Angry from everybody. You are angry. Conspiracy against you 24 hours. Phobia. And the funny, they, you know, they, they created the term says Islamophobe. When the fact that one, the only one is have a phobe is Islam. Phobe from the cross. Phobe from the Bible. Phobe from the pork. Phob from uh, chocolate, phob from the chair. Even chair is haram. A woman she can't sit in the chair. Fe phob phobia from underwear because the underwear are made by the kuffar. Haram, haram. Phobia from the perfume, phobia from the camp, phobia from the dogs, phobia. From, I mean, I mean, you know, this is the religion of phobia. Everything in this cult is about phobia. The black dog is the devil. I mean. Even the black, you can, even the poor black dog, Muhammad did not leave it alone. Why is a black? Why is the devil? Because he's black. So this is this cult is not only filthy, stupid; it is racist, and hate black color, which is enough to prove to us that Muhammad cannot be a person serving God. I mean, black black dog is the devil. I mean, are you are you serious? Yes, brother. How you can prove it to me? If we call Zach and Nike, we will say to you, hey, brother and sister, the prophet he said that we have to kill every black dog. And the reason he said that is very accurate. Actually, if you listen to the black dog, you will see that the black dog, he says, oh, oh, oh. But the yellow dog, brother, he says, how, oh, how, oh, how? Oh. See how beautiful? And this is the clear proof that the black dog is the devil. What? The black dog is the devil. The enemy of Allah is a black man. The most enemy Allah he hates is a black man, according to, to Muhammad. The black dog is the devil. The one who will destroy the Kaaba is an Ethiopian. I mean, even Muhammad he says, kill every pure black. This is alone is enough to prove to us that Muhammad is mental. If you are a um, if you are white or black or you are Asian, my friend, you are you are you are a child of God. God created you in his image. You are his gift, you are his child, and we are not better from each other. A black person from Ethiopia, he is not lower than me, and I am not higher than him. Maybe he is better than me. Muhammad even make fun of the look. Of a black people. Very, very disgusting, aggressive teaching against people. And this is why the heaven of Allah, all of it is about white women, white boys. Uh, uh, not they are not only white they are white they, because Arab have obsession with the white color so he exaggerate in his lies 
So he claimed that they are so white to the point you can see the marrow of their bones. Which is disgusting, by the way. I mean, imagine your wife sitting in front of you and she is wearing a nice uh, uh, lingerie for you. But you see her bones. Like, wow. They are so white. Whore. And they are so transpar transparent to the point you can see the marrow of their bones of their legs. How this is can be from God? What what will happen if the if if the wife uh, uh, God will give me she is a black woman she will not be good for me if she is a black woman or she is an Asian woman what if I cannot see her bones why I want to see her bones am I am, am I a puppy so I get ex excited by the bones bones this is going to be from God. So while we are Jesus saying that in the heaven, he and she, they will be the same as angels, which means they will be equal. In heaven of Allah, women are sex toys and men are there to enjoy those toys. And those toys are made in a special design. They are so white to the point you can see their bones. Actually, even Muhammad, he claimed uh, that in the heaven, there is, there is a uh, market and this market there's nothing for sale there except Playboy magazine and the pictures inside the magazine is for women and men and if a Muslim man he chooses a picture he jump in it and he have sex with it how this can be from God the Prophet said the Messenger of Allah said indeed in paradise indeed look what he's saying when muhammad is saying indeed it's mean the, the lie is big indeed in paradise there is a market in which there is no buying nor selling okay there is there is buying they're selling except what which means what he's saying there is buying and selling but for one product except for images so what this market have for sale images images of what men and women like what Men and women, what does that mean? Playboy magazine of men and women. And whenever a man, who? A man, which means the customer is what? Is a man. Do you, do you notice what he's talking about? Homosexuality in heaven. So the man, if a man he desire, desire what? An image. Image of what? Image of a man or women. This is the heaven of Muhammad. And this is a clear proof that Muhammad is nothing but a fraud and he is a scam. As simple as that. I want to say thank you guys for being here. And uh, with this, I will finish for today. Tomorrow we will have a, another day. Uh, it's going to be Saturday. So I want to wish you a great time. Christmas is coming. And Christmas is great, for it has the name of Christ. And let us make every day is a Christ day. For he bless us, he reward us, and he make us love the Muslims, love the Hindus, love the Buddhas, love the atheists, love everybody, even though they laugh at us. Even though they might think you are a fool. But trust me, the first thing love will do to you will make you healthy, will keep your heart healthy. It's a self-sustain, self-protection. It's your immune system. Don't hate. Don't hate the Muslims. Don't hate the atheists. Don't hate the Jews. Don't hate the Hindus. Otherwise, you are going to hate yourself one day. Because hate brings nothing but depression. And simply, you will hate yourself. You will hate your existence. You will say to yourself, what is the point of this life? Look around me. I see nothing but enemies. Because you hate everybody. This is how they feel it. When they look around, they see nothing but enemies. For us, no. We look around, we see friends. We see human. We see a gift of God. Everything we have is a gift from the Lord. And everything we go through is like a steel and iron. The iron will not be steel unless it goes through a process. So if you want to be strong like a steel, then let the process happen, no problem.
When a person he process iron and he burn the iron to make it a steel and he process it in a certain way, he is not demolishing this, the, the iron, he is making it stronger. So my friend, discrimination make us better, make us stronger, make us more beautiful, make us more wise, make us more useful and make us more close to the Lord. That's why the Lord, He blessed those who they are going to be discriminated in His name. So it's extra blessing for you. All the disciples of Jesus, they've been discriminated. All of them. And even those who came after, and those who came after, and those who came after until now. He prophesied to us about what they will do to us. But this is all will not change anything that we are following the true God and his kingdom will come and time will come when we will be victorious by love by the love of the Messiah not by the hatred of the devil so be victorious by the love of the Messiah and don't let the hatred of the devil take over try to practice love with your family first with your friends Try this Christmas to forgive those who they made something wrong against you. So you can pray to the Lord and say, Our Father out of heaven. And you say to him, Forgive to us the same as you forgive to others. Because if we don't forgive to others, we do not deserve his forgiveness. Forgiveness is a process. It's not just asking for God to forgive you. It is you forgiving yourself. For if you don't forgive others, Simply you are saying, God, don't forgive me. I don't deserve your forgiveness. The second you practice hatred, it's the same time, the same second you are asking God to stay away from you. You don't forgive others. You have hatred. And why he want to forgive you? So I believe strongly that forgiveness is a very, very nice gift from the Lord. And love is like the, the let us say, the cure, the immune system, which make you always in good spirit, enjoying your life, being happy, no matter what happened. Sometime, you know, YouTube show me videos, like suggest videos for me. And, and the other day I saw a video about uh, the Filipino people. You know, they have a very strong typhoon and the flood all over the houses. And I mean, it's really bad, really, really bad. Poor people, very poor. We are talking about people living, you know, from houses made from, let us say, cardboard. Very poor people. And honest to God, the camera goes between the houses and every one of them is smiling. As if nothing happened. And I say to myself, those God, those people are blessed. I mean, if I am them, I will be very devastated now. I will be very upset. I will be so angry. I mean, already they have nothing. And even that nothing is gone. So my friend, if you cannot learn like those people how to live, you have no life. Honestly, I, 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 I feel jealous from those people. I mean, how in the world you can be suffering from such a disaster and it everybody is smiling and laughing. I mean, you look at the faces. If this is happening in the Middle East, we will be eating each other. You know, we Middle Eastern, we are very aggressive people. I really felt jealous from them. I wish I can have what they have in their face. And I said to myself, they are really beautiful people. And they are gifted. See, God, he did not, like, they are poor. 
but he filled their heart with something make them really rich they enjoy their life even better than us they should be the one is stressed not me for seeing I just saw it in TV and I'm stressed I just saw it in TV and far away I mean you walk you, you walk in the water to your west and the water is full of dirt and garbage and those people they are smiling very beautiful people you get mad fast no I don't get mad fast actually I'm very patient with the you know but we get mad but I'm saying our nature as Middle Eastern we are we are we are different you know the Middle East have different cultures and when you live in the Middle East you have to be a wolf to survive there's no sheep Chiefs will die. It's a wolf land. There's no just. There's no government. There's big whale, small whale, big fish, small fish. This is the Middle East. As simple as that. All right. No, we will not take any calls for now because it's getting late. It's 9.41 p.m. Maybe tomorrow, the one who want to call us, he can call us. All right. So I want to say thank you guys for being here. And I hope the Lord will bless us with more love and more uh, forgiveness. And we will be able to love the Muslims. I know what I'm asking for is very hard because of what uh, Al Qaeda do, ISIS do, like Boko Haram, raping women, killing. I mean, it's a disgusting. But remember, remember. You are loving the person, not loving the ideology. You are not loving the devil believe. You are loving the person which God he created as he created you. So be good. The one who want to do devilish things, okay, he will be pay, he, he will pay. The one who follow the devil, they will pay. Trust me, they will pay. Anyone who goes start slaughtering people, he will pay. Maybe he think killing people is so easy because his evil is blinding him. But sooner or later he will pay. Our life is very short and judgment day will come. Yesterday you were a child. Today you are an adult. Tomorrow you are old and the day after you are dead. As simple as that. And if they think that day is not coming, that day is coming, I assure you. So I want to say thank you guys for being here. May the Lord bless you. And I will see you soon again. Christ is Lord. Islam is false. And may the love of the Messiah shower us, all of us, Christians, Muslims, Hindus, Jews, Buddhas, so we can live in a peace and we can understand what is the Messiah and why his love is very important. And you know, if the whole world practice one sentence of the messiah teaching love your enemy imagine how we can change in this earth all the budget for defense will be gone love your enemy which means trillions and trillions of money spend it for killing each other can be spent to build the schools feeding the children making a human being have better health and better life but because if a human being is greedy and he is filthy and he is full of hatred and he in and many cults and many religion teaching hatred like Muhammad teach in teaching that will destroy this earth. So may the Lord guide us and may the Lord save us from the evil of hate. Thank you and take care. Bye bye.